Hi guys, so today we want to look at a pose that is very popular in many yoga classes called Parjvottanasana or the English version is Pyramid Pose. That's what I hear. Yeah, yeah. But we stay with Parjvottanasana, <laughs> it's universal. Ha. So <laughs> that's the straight legged forward fold. Um, I'm going to have my prop Ashley here. <laughs> Good. So she steps one leg back, it's usually depending on the flexibility of three to four feet. Apart from each other, the back foot is slightly turned out, front foot parallel to the shortage of the mat. And then usually the teacher will ask you to square your hips. Sometimes I even ask my students to place your hands onto your hips for the sake of being more aware of the hip structure. Yeah, so you will hear terms of pay attention that the hip bones all the in front are in line with the shortage of your mats. Most of the time we tell you then to move the back hip a little bit more forward, the front hip slightly back, and here everything most of the time is still okay until you're being asked to bow forward. So Ashley takes a deep breath in, and then exhale, bow forward, and this is what happens many times. As you can see now, her hips are not square anymore. Yeah, so the hip from the back leg lifts, and here we create a lot of compression on this side of the front of the front hip flexor, which will start to hurt eventually. <laughs> you still good? I'm still good. So how to get out of this misery? I'm going to place my leg here on the inside of her shin so she can press into me. So not even if you don't have a leg there, you can still do this. When you push your shin to the midline, it engages the adductor muscles, your inner thigh muscles. Once they're toned, she can use these muscles to root the femur bone backwards and then widen the hips away from the midline. Perfect. And she is still squeezing the shin to the midline. So half of this problem is already taken care of. Now she engages her pelvic floor muscles, lifts the low belly, which now here creates space for the hip flexors and also her hips are starting to become more square. And then the flesh of your buttocks start to flow down, which again lifts all this up here, and now the hips are square. So I can see here the base of her top of her sacrum, the fingertips are on one line. Now, she can start to bow forward here and bend your elbows to the outside. And if you would have shorter hamstrings, of course, you would have hands underneath your blocks. Why is this important? Obviously for good hip alignment too, but also if you, can you come out of alignment one more time? are in this position, you will not stretch all your hamstrings. You will only stretch pretty much one, maybe one and a half of them, the inner hamstrings. The outer hamstrings out here are not getting a good stretch. That only happens when the hips are square. There, a little bit more lift from here. That's it, nice. Now all three and a half hamstrings will be stretched so we can see them here on the wall. Good, hands to your hips and then come on up to standing. Let's look at that one more time from the other side, or on the other leg. So that she will show it again, wrong first. Yeah, so the hips are where we are, yeah, the, the pop. pop. You know, that, that, that's how we also know that you're not in good alignment. Yeah, so this hip is too much lifted, and this side is collapsing. So she pushes the shin to the midline, and Dr. Stone, then she roots the inner thigh back to create an internal rotation in this leg and widens the whole hip away from the midline. So now we each have some squares on this side already here. Beautiful. Then again, the tone comes from the low belly, pelvic floor, buttock muscles to lift the front, and especially here, the hip bone of your front leg moves away from the thigh. With all this happening now, now she can bow forward and that will increase the length of all three hamstrings on your front body. Okay, hands to your hips, come on up. Step forward. Ta-da! <laughs>